Hey guys, so I finally got around to programming my object tracking camera, the Pixie 2, with my Delta Robot, and I've got some different colored golf balls from like a putt-putt course. I bought them on Amazon, and I had the camera originally mounted here, and I've decided to move the camera up here, so I made this little bracket, and it mounts the camera directly overhead, and the reason is because at uh, perspective it's kind of hard to distinguish between the green balls or just a row like a green object that's the shape of a of a row or a column so when you're looking at the table from overhead I mean it makes sense it just I figured I'd still be able to distinguish the objects from up here but based on the viewing angle I wasn't really able to do that so um, this works out pretty fine uh, you know Good for what I'm using it for. I can just have the robot move out of the way. So you can see here, um, this is just like a little visual setup tool. So this software was developed by the same company that made the Pixie 2 camera, and you can use it to uh, set seven different signatures. So the signatures are basically the colors. So um, and then you can label them. So I've labeled signature one is red, two is green, and three is blue. And there's a lot of different things you can, you know, uh, configure here, minimum block area, the merge distance, and the sensitivity for the individual uh, colors that you set up. So I made this table here for a reason. I was originally gonna have like a wall where you can just throw the, the balls in and then kind of have the robot sort them into a bucket or something like that. But the issue is when two objects of the same color are too close to each other, it thinks it's one object. And it's very difficult for the robot to know where to pick up that object. It becomes even worse when there's several because here it's going to want to pick up the one in the center, but you can also see it's kind of jittery. For this case, I have the X, Y values kind of filtered out, so I have a range knowing where the ball is in position. So I have a program here that's just looping, and if you look, it is uh, detecting 10 red, 10 green, 10 blue, and then it's actually drawing the grid. So a zero would be no ball, which is you know, all the, the top row doesn't have any uh, golf balls in it. And then one is all red, two is green, three is blue. And you see um, for the 10 red, 10 green, and 10 blue, it's giving me X, Y positions for each one, as well as the width and height of that object and how long it's been there. So if you look at the chart here, let's remove the bottom left to red. And so that's going to end up with a two zeros at the bottom. And if I take, you know, two more green, you'll see down here it's replaced with a two. And it also says, okay, eight red, 12 green, 10 blue. So I can jumble this up with as many colors uh, as I can fit on the bed without it, you know, mixing and actually giving me individual golf balls here. So a few other improvements I made were for the rod ends. So if you look, well, first of all, you can see that when it's in the way, you can't really use it too much. So you kind of have to get it out of the way to take a snapshot of the table so that's not going to be able to do like real time unless it was on the actual head itself. If the camera was on the actual end effector, the hand of the robot here, I don't have a large enough viewing angle to retract all the way and still be able to see the table. So if you look all the way at the top there is just enough to get, you know, this part of the table. I can't even see the top row. The top row would just be used for the sorting algorithms, so I can still reach it with the, the actual robot. I can reach it and set stuff there while it's sorting, but the camera can't actually see it. So 
Um, but I made some improvements to the rod ends. So these rod ends that I'm using, I was using these screws here with the pan head and by turning down the head diameter of these screws, I actually got an extra inch of travel on each side. So an extra inch, an inch, so about two inches um, because the head of the screw is actually restricting the motion there. So that was, uh, you know, I could probably find some screws that have a lower profile head, but I just turned down the ones I had. Uh, I've also added this spring-loaded suction cup holder. And that's nice because then it'll uh, account for different variances in height. So if I ever switch to different size objects on the same table, I won't have to worry about crashing into them. And I can also exchange the, the nozzles pretty easily. This one just unscrews and, and these, will, these will go on and they make several different types of uh, nozzles. This company, uh, Smalls, I believe. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like a German company. So I've also been working on the pump. So the vacuum pump and the solenoid are in this little plastic enclosure. And I had them insulated with foam because it was extremely loud. And so let's just upload that sketch real quick. So you can see that I won't have to pull vacuum the entire move. When I pick up an object and I go to move it to another location, I can pull the vacuum, turn the vacuum off, move it over, and the solenoid, the reason you have a solenoid in there, so is to open up the air and allow outside air in. Because if you just use the vacuum pump, when you turn off the power to the vacuum pump, you saw that it, it still holds on. So you need a solenoid or something similar to disconnect the, basically release the vacuum from the line. A few other things I'm going to be adding are a light bar. So my lab is pretty bright, but if I end up taking this to some kind of convention hall or something like that, I won't be able to control the lighting, so I'm probably going to add um, an angled light bar here and then make sure that it even works with the lights turned off. The other thing I need to work on is making an enclosure for my custom PCB, and I'm going to end up putting that up here somewhere so I can feed all the encoder wires and the camera wires and clean this up. This is just temporary. This wire here and that'll look pretty nice. I have that back here and then I need to make a front wrap that goes around the front here. Um, and then, yeah, getting a lot closer to finishing it, but you know, when I actually finish it, it's, I'm gonna wanna add different things, you know. If I had the money, I would put, um, you know, different gearboxes. These are just regular planetary gearboxes. So there, there is some backlash there. And, um, it, I mean, it's minimal. And with the encoders, I can compensate for it. And for this case, it's absolutely not critical. I'll be able to pick the ball up even if I'm off a little bit. But you can see that there's a, it's hard to really see, but there's a little bit of backlash in the motor but I mean, it doesn't really translate too bad. But like I said, with the encoders, you can compensate for the backlash there. And the other thing I did to try to minimize the backlash was 
these rod ends, I ordered way more than I needed because a good portion of them had a lot of slop in them. So you know, I ended up ordering twice as many as I needed, and I'm glad I did because the ones I ended up putting on the machine, there's no noticeable backlash in the actual um, ball joint. Whereas, you know, some of them, they were ridiculous and uh, really rattled quite a bit. But anyway, hope you guys liked the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you next time. Bye.